Uh, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting July 11th, 2013 at 1800 hours. Trustee Fox, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let the record show that all the trustees are here. Uh, trustee Branch is attending by phone. Uh, uh, trustee Aronson is not here yet. Um, and Trustee Wisniewski is absent and we're unable to get all of them on the phone. Um, additions and deletions to the agenda. I have none. I'm good. Okay. Uh, review the April uh, meeting minutes from April 18th. Uh, I move to approve the minutes of the April meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are approved. Uh, first item of old business will be to deal with the pension trustee vacancy. Uh, Chief, you want to talk to us about that procedure? Uh, certainly. Uh, we uh, uh, held an election of all uh, current and retired uh, members, and uh, the vote was unanimous in favor of uh, appointing uh, Ed Oleski as the uh, uh, pension uh, trustee. Okay. At this time, I'll swear in Ed Oleski as the new pension trustee. Is your right hand? I state your name. Ed Oleski. Will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. Will faithfully support the Constitution of the United, the Constitution States. Of the United States. And the state of Colorado. And the state of Colorado. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And the laws made pursuant thereto. And I will faithfully perform the duties. And I will faithfully perform the duties of the office of trustee. Of, of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. Pension Board. Pension Board. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. New business. Do we have any? We have, we have no new business on okay. this month. Okay. We have no requests or no new business. Is there any other business to be brought before the pension? Uh, I can give a quick legal, if you want, uh, just we're continuing our research in the pension uh, questions that have been asked to us, but it'll be, I was talking to the chief, it'll be sometime at least by your next pension board meeting before we have anything done. By it. Okay. Okay. All right. The record show Trustee Aronson has joined us. All we've done basically is uh, swear in at Oleski. Chief explained the election procedure. Thank you. Uh, we have no other new business tonight unless you have any. No. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll take a couple minutes and then we'll start the regular board. Director's regular meeting, July 11th, 2013, at 1812. Director Fox, you did a fine job with the Pledge of Allegiance oh, before you do it again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let the record show. All the directors are here with the exception of Director Wisniewski, who we can't raise by phone, and Director Branch is on the speakerphone. Okay, any additions or deletions to the agenda? No. I have none. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Uh, motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, review the June 13th meeting minutes. Good. I'm 
stand. Oh, okay. Greg, you good? Yes, yeah, but I am good. Okay, motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, uh, the next item we're going to go to before financial matters is the level of service committee report, Chief. Okay, um, so the level of service committee has been uh, meeting for uh, quite a few months now and uh, exploring various issues uh, related to our ability to continue to provide uh, good quality Wait, can you service. The phone over, please? Okay. So, uh, after uh, meeting for a number of months to look at uh, various issues related to our ability to provide uh, uh, good quality service to the public, uh, including uh, such uh, factors as the uh, uh, insurance rating criteria, um, incident response needs, uh, the ability to respond to multiple incidents, uh, our ability to uh, you know, provide initial attack to wildfires, and our current uh, status of our uh, fleet and facilities as well as our staffing. Uh, we came to a number of, um, of uh, conclusions. You know, over the past uh, you know, two years, we've uh, eliminated three positions out of 12. Uh, we've reduced the, the uh, benefit cost uh, to our uh, full-time personnel, um, el eliminated our apparatus replacement funds entirely, uh, reduced our uh, training budget, reduced our facility uh, maintenance and improvement, and uh, reduced our fire equipment funding. Uh, those were all in, uh, in uh, response to fairly dramatic decreases in uh, funding uh, due to drops in uh, property values, uh, coupled with uh, steadily reduced um, our, uh, ambulance uh, revenues from um, lower uh, payments from Medicare, from uh, more uh, personnel uh, not opting to take a, a transport, and uh, basically uh, just a, a number of people that have had an inability to pay. For next year, we know that uh, we are looking at a minimum now of another $40,000 in cuts, um, and uh, very probably that uh, number will increase uh, to anywhere from uh, fifty to sixty-five thousand dollars in additional cuts for 2014, uh, due to continued reduction in uh, property values as of the date that the uh, uh, the uh, Jefferson and Park County assessors had uh, last uh, looked at property, which was June of last year for uh, for figures for next year. So once again, that is that was very bad timing in terms of providing revenue to the fire district. In that, uh, that was prior to you know the stabilization and, and in improvement in the housing market that has happened since. However, because of the uh, time lag for uh, property value um, assessments in Colorado, uh, it'll be a minimum of two additional years of reduced revenues uh, before we would see any turnaround, even if uh, uh, values shot up at this point. Uh, so over the past uh, two years, we've had $202,000 in operational cuts and $279,000 in capital financing cuts, uh, largely uh, just simply stopping uh, any capital uh, purchases. The um, one of the factors that we also looked at was how we could be best or most efficient moving ahead. And uh, operationally, I'm going to make the recommendation that uh, even with uh, a potential mill levy increase, we would not be refilling, uh, restoring the three positions that would have cut, but would look at restoring uh, one of those positions and have that position uh, basically take. Uh, you know, the fire marshal duties and the training duties, uh, you know, on instead of having two positions for that and then not uh, restoring the, uh, the uh, um, 
part-time uh, data uh, person at all. Uh, the other thing that uh, you know we, I looked at very closely with this is that uh, you know we we had uh, 25 vehicles in the fleet uh, recently with a, a estimated uh, you know replacement costs in in uh, today's dollars of, of five five point one two five million dollars, and that has been one of the biggest issues that's been facing the district in that uh, you know fire engines are very expensive and. Um, you know, when once we've gotten behind on that, you know, uh, to bring the fleet back up to, uh, you know, just to the point where uh, the uh, vehicles are, we don't have any that are 25 years or older, would require about one million dollars right now. Uh, and on top of that, we have about 25% uh, of the rest of the fleet that is either at or close to its service life. By taking that uh, $5.125 million fleet and dividing it by the expected service life of each of those apparatus, uh, it turns out that we need to put uh, $390,000 into capital replacement every year to stay caught up. And obviously that's it all figured in 2013 dollars uh, and not, you know, basically as, uh, as time goes on, the uh, cost of those apparatus increases at a rate that's higher than inflation. Uh, so we would see that number continuing to grow in the future. I'm going to make the recommendation that we make some uh, significant changes to our fleet in that uh, we would uh, basically eliminate eight out of the 25 vehicles uh, that we have by purchasing vehicles that are capable of doing uh, more than one job at, at a time. For example, we have uh, brush trucks that can fight wildfires and all, su all winter long they sit uh, idle. Uh, and then we have a one truck that we use to plow the parking lot here and all summer long it doesn't do much. So by um, modifying some of what we do there, we could reduce the uh, estimated replacement value uh, to uh, 3.9 million instead of the 5.1 million. And that would reduce our annual cost from 390,000 to 296,000. So essentially, we'd be cutting about $100,000 a year in replacement costs. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we would actually improve our capabilities in just about every respect. Uh, one of the ways that we would do this would be that right now we have four stations with four tankers, four engines, and four brush trucks. Well. We can uh, combine, uh, right now, the, the type of engines that we have at each of those stations are the type 1 engines, or the structural uh, fire engines. And they don't uh, do a very good job at fighting wildfires. Uh, they're large, they're not very maneuverable, and they don't carry any wildland equipment at all. Uh, by moving to a type 3 fire apparatus, uh, we could have a combined wildland structural apparatus and we'd place that at two of the stations and then have a third one as a, uh, as a uh, reserve and then maintain two Type 1 engines at the other two stations. That way, we, right now, we don't have a reserve apparatus at all. So, uh, for example, during the month of May, uh, we had one station that was out of service for three weeks out of four uh, because one or another of our fire engines was in for mechanical service. Uh, we don't have a spare one that we can put at that station to keep it operational. By running three Type 3s and the two Type 1s, we would be able to basically cover uh, stations when an apparatus goes out for mechanical service. Uh, and we would also be improving our capability in wildland response in that we would be carrying more water and those, those types of trucks are very much designed to protect structures. Uh, that's, that's where they were first uh, developed as a wildland urban interface uh, vehicle uh, for uh, you know, primarily in California and their use has spread uh, across the country since then. Uh, so we would have essentially five apparatus to respond to structure fires instead of, of four currently and we would continue to have four uh, apparatus to respond to wildfires however they would be uh, carrying more water and more tools and have better capability for protecting structures. Uh, 
we would uh, also eliminate a number of the miscellaneous vehicles like the rehab unit, uh, the plow truck, the old pump truck, and instead have three pickup trucks that would then uh, be able to do you know, all of those jobs. So, for example, we had the, the plow truck had the transmission go out last year. In order to have the, the lots plowed, we had to hire a contractor to come in and do it because we only had one vehicle that was capable of plowing. So by moving to you know, three pickup trucks that could provide rehab services uh, you know, and carry rope rescue equipment when we have those calls, and all three would be equipped with, with plow mounts, and to have those instead of uh, you know, the SUVs and the rehab unit and the pump truck, we would have fewer vehicles, lower replacement costs, and those vehicles would be more versatile as well. So uh, what, what we would be looking at with this, uh, you know, despite the fact that we have, um, again, reduced uh, you know, our overall uh, costs between um, uh, you know, the, the uh, capital replacement and our operational costs, we've reduced them by uh, $537,000 to date. We're looking at an additional forty to sixty-five thousand dollars for next year, uh, but we would be able to essentially operate with uh, basically a leaner, more efficient uh, fire department uh, with uh, the four hundred thirty thousand that was estimated from a two point five mil um, levy. Now, once again, this would not restore uh, two of the of the personnel cuts. It would not you know, increase any of our existing services. We would basically stay below uh, our staffing and below our equipment levels of, uh, of two years ago, but I believe that we could do that and still provide uh, an excellent service to the, to the public. So having, uh, having reviewed this, we also uh, you know, did some uh, polling of the public to see whether uh, they would support um, bond issue, a mill levy, or both, and uh, the response from that was not, uh, we did not get a tremendous number of respondents. Uh, it was less than 150 people who have responded to that. However, uh, what we had was 83% were in favor of uh, increased funding for the dis district, 3% uh, were undecided, and the remainder uh, were, um, were opposed to uh, funding increase. Uh, so based on that, uh, it, it would appear that uh, uh, we do have uh, the support of the public to try to restore funding to the level that we can keep our, our uh, financial um, picture from, from uh, getting uh, worse. Well, one of the biggest factors that we've had with this has been the uh, impact on uh, you know, fire insurance rates, and we're continuing to deal with that on a daily basis. Um, We've had, you know, had several more calls yesterday. One person whose uh, fire insurance just went from $500 to $1,600. Another person who re reported a 250% increase. Uh, and they're wanting to know what, we're, what we can do about that. And obviously, you know, not allowing the fire uh, insurance rates to, to get dramatically worse is a, is a major impact on uh, providing that good service to the public. Um, that uh, you know is uh, probably our most important uh, level of service uh, indicator that we have right now is being able to maintain uh, our uh, our existing uh, ISO rating. Um, if we see that rating drop, as uh, we would likely do if we do have to close uh, Conifer Mountain Station and, and remove those uh, the water tankers from service, uh, that. Uh, that's only going to be much worse than it is currently for the folks that are already seeing dramatic increases in their fire insurance rates. So again, um, you know, our recommendation uh, from the committee was to uh, look at a 1.6 mil uh, permanent levy and a uh, 0.9 temporary mil levy to uh, finance um, you know, the, the immediate need apparatus. Uh, however, I believe that uh, uh, Mr. Toussaint has some other options that he'd like the board to consider with that uh, in, in addition to uh, that particular uh, uh, recommendation. Would you like 
it to. I can if he's, if he's good. okay. Um, we have um, as Bill's been keeping me in the loop about what the committee's been doing, and um, uh, so we have started doing the pay, the footwork to get you ready for an election. Um, the first deadline is. Um, July 26, I believe it is. So it's it's coming right up, and and you do need to pass something tonight if you're going to uh, go forward. This doesn't commit you unequivocally to doing a, a uh, mill levy election in the fall. But if you don't do this, you're not going to get in. So there's a first step. So I'm going to ask. I'll come back to that um, in the packet that I passed out and. Um, I, only done it so far to the board um, because this is attorney-client um, privilege and um, Greg probably can't hear me. Greg, can you hear me? Greg, can you hear uh, Tussan? Can you hear Richard? Uh, it, it's cutting out. I didn't want to be disrupted, so I, was, I didn't say anything, but I, I'm only here about half what he said. Okay, we're moving you over there. All right. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Great, great job, by the way, uh, Chief. Uh, very great uh, insight and planning. I, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. He said thank you. All right. I've got uh, the little Star Trek animal here, so I think he'll. Can you hear me now, Greg? Yeah, behave yourself. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, all right. And um, so I have given the board for consideration. Um, a number of different alternatives, um, but at this point, I think they should remain in draft until the board takes some action on this. And, and so it's attorney client uh, privilege at this point, but you know, it's going to come out very soon, whichever way you want to go. Um, and Greg um, Marie has your uh, uh, copy. So, um, what these, it's been a long time since. Elk Creek has done a uh, Tabor election, and uh, um, uh, so it's probably been a while since most of you have read a Tabor question. There is a reason that it is um, all one sentence, because it's required to be, and it is, um, you know, it's a paragraph long, and, and but that's the way it, it's written. Um, what Chief did discuss was uh, with us is the uh, 2.5 mils, 1.6 per minute, uh, 0.9 after certain vehicles are um, purchased and, and paid for. Um, one of the initial ways was that they want to tie it to a lease purchase, but I think that's going to run into some Tabor issues, and so that's the last one, and I'm not really suggesting that you really spend a lot of time on that one. I don't think... I mean, I'm sure we could probably uh, come up with a way to do it, but I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be so confusing because I'm going to have to add even more language than is in there. I don't think it's, um, um, I don't think it's going to pass muster at this point. And, and as I said, these are drafts. The other, um, the top two have reductions of that 0.9 after um, six years and or eight years, and. Um, um, and that um, is a uh, uh, would be based on what a lease um, uh, purchase might take, and we would have to run this past some of the lease purchase people uh, out there and make sure that with what's going on with interest rates now for municipal municipalities that this is realistic and it might have to be a little bit longer um, in that regard. Um, the, uh, the third one that's on your packet is a Tabor question with no reduction. And um, the reason that that was uh, suggested by me is that um, it seems to me that, and having, as many of you know, um, I've been involved with this uh, special districts for uh, 35 years now, it, by the time you get around, I mean, I was here when they bought all of those five trucks or seven trucks or whatever it was all at one time, and I think those are the ones that are now really, um, you know, getting long in the tooth and, and uh, coming up to the end of their useful life. And, and that's the problem. You've got to, as uh, Chief was saying, you've got to put away 300000 or $400,000 a year to keep the capitalization going, and that's, that was what wasn't being done, apparently. 
uh, over the last several years, or you would have a bigger, um, you know, chunk in um, in the capital fund at this point. So, my suggestion is, if you if you're not wedded to the 2.5 mils, that you maybe can reduce that somewhat, but keep it as a permanent um, mill levy increase. Um, the impact on any property, and Bill and I have not had an opportunity to do this, but say a home valued at $200,000 or some number, and what that would be in a reduction of taxes by taking it from 2.5 um, down the, the uh, 9 tenths to the 1.6, is there really a significant difference for a property owner um, to have that, to have that reduced? Um, especially since you have a pretty big commercial base now, and so the commercial property owners also help pay for that. So is it, you know, for your uh, residents and for the businesses up here, does there um, seem like enough of a reduction um, by doing that uh, at the end of this period, or are you just going to, um, you know, uh, be in the same position where we don't end up having enough cash flow to keep replacing in a, on an ongoing basis, doing the, whether it's $300,000 or $400,000, having enough money going into your capital fund every year if you reduce it. So I think we probably need to get you, and we don't have to have um, the taper question done this month, but before next month, um, I want, I would like, and remember, you cannot, um, email each other, but you can all re email to me, um, uh, your comments um, uh, about these various things and what you're thinking. And Bill and I, in the meantime, can try and get you some um, more numbers on what uh, a 2.5 to 1.6 really means to property owners in, in the area and what that would uh, really look like. Um, and then Bill had one other uh, suggestion, which we did not, uh, we have not put down even in a draft form. Bill, why don't you explain what that is, um, what your suggestion was from our discussion earlier well, today? I think one of the other, one of the other options that uh, the board could consider would be to, uh, you know, go ahead with uh, the 2.5 or the uh, the mill level that uh, that you'd like to proceed with, but uh, consider. Uh, you know, having the entire amount sunset, uh, you know, at some point in the future. Uh, so if uh, the board did, for example, a 2.5 mil levy and then uh, sunsetted that at 10 years, you know, that would essentially take care of the issues between now and then. And then the, the voters of the district would have the, the, you know, have to make the decision at that point whether to uh, go ahead with a, uh, you know, with a renewal of that levy, but uh, that would, um, you know, I know that uh, some voters would like to, you know, like to see that these are not permanent um, uh, levies. That's the one uh, good good side to that uh, from the standpoint of the district. Uh, the uh, trade-off to that is that every time you do an election, it does cost. Uh, so there would be the expense of having a if you, uh, the board at that time uh, elected to uh, run a renewal on that levy, that would uh, in entail the additional costs of, of conducting the election then. So the only action uh, the, we're asking for the board tonight, other than to read these and, and, and uh, either uh, get your comments to the chief or get them to me, we're, we're kind of lockstep on this thing, um, uh, then the only action we need is if you are interested in, in pursuing this, and again, this isn't um, set in concrete at this point, but Jefferson County and Park County, both um, under statute, um, um, are to get a written notification by the end of this month. And so we have a form um, that can um, be filled out, and I've talked to uh, Chief and to Marie and said, you know, are you guys in a position to do this uh, election and all it entails? Because it's, you know, it's pretty time uh, intensive. 
given what they've just gone through for the last two months, uh, um, that you know that worries me as we go into uh, what should be our fire wildland fire season and in the fall, and so and the elections coming up. So both of them said, well, we could probably do it, but it may not be optimal, and so. I'm going to recommend that we go ahead and appoint um, uh, as a representative, and this is just as a key person to it. It still has to come through these two, but as a key person would be um, uh, Rhonda Davis of my office um, to go ahead and, and be that key person. And then um, we would then have, um, uh, you know, you might go ahead and sign the IGA. And it's when you sign the IGA that we actually start, in, you know, that, and that's next, end of next month. That's when we've kind of said to the counties, okay, you can start spending money now for Elk Creek um, because we split the cost for everybody who's going to have um, uh, paper elections. I think the good news is, is there's going to be several, maybe for all of us, it's not good news, but overall it is going to be several questions and that the state looks like they're going to have that one on educational funding. So they'll take a big chunk of the cost because they have to go to everybody. School districts talking about having a, a question, so there's another one that everybody will help pay for. And then, so all you will actually pay for is a pro rata share based on the number of voters in our district. And so. Um, and one of the costs that we'll have to have is uh, that we will have to do, for instance, is that all the people who are own property here in the district but may not be registered to vote here, that are registered somewhere else in the um, in the in the state, um, we have to identify those people, and then they get a special ballot to just uh, um, vote um, uh, for these issues because. Uh, um, they, um, the property owners and the register, they're just, they will get, wherever they're registered, they'll get whatever county that is or whatever coordinated elections being done there, but they'll also get to vote here because they're a property owner in Elk Creek. So, and that's the kind of cost in the, in the, that you want to face is to get that list. And then that's one of the things that's very time consuming because you have to identify all our property people and measure it against the voter list in the state through the Secretary of State's office and then uh, come up with a list of uh, people who would get ballots sent out to them who do not live in the, uh, who live in the confines of our districts. And, and of course we do coordinate with both counties because uh, the Park County uh, section of the district. So we have to coordinate with both. So that would be my recommendation. It would be you as signing the IGAs. Um, and of course, we'd get approval on those IGAs. I've already started uh, uh, working on it for a number of districts, so we're going to um, uh, get those in in good shape. And I can have those at your next meet, board meeting and board. In fact, we can have them to you ahead of time, so the board can all review them. We can adopt those at the next board meeting because they'll have to be sent in by the uh, before your September meeting. Yeah. And then, um, in the meantime, the Tabor question we've got to keep. You know, working it and, and seeing what those numbers are, and I think we owe you a, a few more numbers so you can really see what this 0.9 mills really does in terms of reductions and and what it does long term to the um, uh, you know to your finances. Um, I mean, and that's one of the things that I'm concerned about is that if you drop it, you know, too quickly, you just not it's not going to get you out of the hole that we find ourselves in. You know, you, you know we can. Uh, I'll grinch about why we're in that hole, but we're in it. And, and the point is, we got this board is now charged with getting us out of that hole, and, and that's that's really what we're going to do. So uh, that's why we're trying to give you as many options as we can. Understood. Is everything cleared on that? So all that's required tonight is a motion. It's a motion to process. adopt uh, or to appoint uh, Rhonda Davis of Tucson Emer and Cody um, as your uh, representative and that uh, we are to, uh, that the law firms would go ahead and notify both counties to go forward at this point. Is that and if you want to pull the plug later because it's not going to work, then pull the plug. That, that she becomes a DEO? We actually don't have a DEO on this because it's a coordinated election. The DEO is really somebody in the county. 
Uh, she is, what do they call her? Uh, just representative. Okay. The district representative. Okay. Is everybody clear on what that motion will be? But does that motion include a decision to go ahead with the election or not? It's an indication that you're going ahead with the election, it's, but it's not an irrevocable decision. The next and and that, that satisfies the July 26th deadline. Correct. Okay. I move uh, that that recommendation be approved. I second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Greg? Aye. Okay. All right. Um, okay, then we'll wait. Uh, for the other recommendations and the other information. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that uh, the, with all the cuts we've made, the department is as lean and as efficient as it can possibly be. Uh, everyone knows we have one of the lowest mills in the entire state, especially for the amount of service that this district provides. Um, the property values, no secret to anybody. Um, unfortunately, long range planning wasn't done. Doesn't matter, you're right, we have the problem now. Um, I believe the best way to handle this is take our time and figure out the best way to do it because I know voters need to know what the problem is. It's pretty clearly identified um, what our solution is, what they're going to get, what it's going to cost, and if and when it's going to end. That's why we need to do our due diligence and make sure we make our best decision on what we want to do because it's pretty clear and apparent to everyone. Uh, paying a little bit more in fire insurance. Uh, versus or taxes versus paying a lot more in fire insurance is a, is a no-brainer uh, should be for anyone but um, uh, I believe we all uh, are educated enough to know we've got a problem here and this is the, really the only way we're going to solve it so uh, you can pay pay a little more in taxes or pay a, a lot more in fire insurance and help and then you have the peace of mind of knowing you we're going to keep the service that we have here because we're pretty fortunate to have the, the service we have in this district so. Um, that's why I think it's important for us to make sure we pick the right, the right uh, language to go forward. Um, anything else? No, I have nothing else. I will uh, ask to be excused, though, if the board doesn't have anything more for me. I've got some out of town gas. Appreciate it. Good. All right. Um, I'd like to. I think I should thank the committee. Yeah, and uh, just to follow up with the thank you. Okay, thank you. just to follow up with the comments that I made too. Uh, I think this committee did a great job uh, of identifying this, bringing it to the attention. I know the chief's done a great job trying to keep things running and figure out how to run this department as lean as he can. I think the apparatus, from my background and experience, the apparatus ideas he has not only uh, will be more cost efficient. I actually think it'll be better service for the district, uh, be easier to maintain. So. Uh, to be commended for that, Chief, and then having the difficult decisions of layoffs and the reductions and taking on extra burden of two employees that you've been doing yourself. So, um, And I know the committee's done a fine job as far as identifying the facts, uh, the health care, the uh, fire insurance people that we're using that brought us a lot of information to know how much uh, fire insurance is going to go up if we, if we start losing our ISO rating. Uh, so I think they've done an outstanding job. So. Everybody's in it for the common cause here. And, uh, facts for the facts, and hopefully we'll come up with the best uh, plan that we can, keep the increase to a minimum, but still be able to uh, run this district appropriately. Okay. Did you want to add anything? Good. Greg, anything? Greg, did you have any? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, this is the last, this is the last part here. What did you say? Do you want to add anything, any comments? On the potential of a. Uh, no, I, I, just, I appreciate uh, the great options, but again, I appreciate the uh, tremendous insight and uh, work by the committee and also, uh, you know, recommendations and, and thought uh, on the Chief's part. I, I think it's uh, extremely well thought out and, and uh, provides us uh, a winning combination of less vehicles but, uh, but better, better flexibility, better coverage. Um, you know, the magic is that uh, we still obviously got to push ahead and, and gain the, the uh, commitment and the, uh, and the support by the, by the community here in a few months. But uh, um, I really believe we're on the right track to do that. And, and uh, I think that we can, we can uh, hopefully wrap up the, the 
proper things uh, shortly and, and move ahead with that. So I, I, I thank, uh, thank the Chief and everyone involved. All right, thank you. Uh, that'll take us to financial matters. Uh, I have a couple of items. One, of course, is the June uh, financials. You have in your packet uh, our usual financial report in terms of uh, monthly expenditures. Uh, I did receive a list of the monthly expenditures and have reviewed them uh, with Marie. And the uh, total is $149,842, and I move that those expenses be approved. Is there a second? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Second thing Aye. is we do have our audit completed, or almost completed. Uh, the, uh, the audit uh, uh, is uh, pretty much like we've had last year and, and years before. Uh, there are some recommendations that uh, uh, we are going to implement with the help of our uh, new contract account. Uh, you have in your packet a, uh, uh, an income statement, which is this long chart-like thing. Uh, that just gives you an idea of how we're allocating the new chart of accounts. The numbers there uh, do not match our expenses because this month we made a bunch of journal entries to get money out of the old accounts into the new accounts. So the new organization, when you make that transition, it gets things go back and forth. And so by uh, the July report, we want to have uh, you know those things squared away. But this this uh, uh, arrangement follows our budget. I think the chief has some changes that he wants to make in terms of some of where some of these uh, items are. Since, in my view, it's the chief that needs this information more than anybody else because this is what's used to manage the department, uh, he will go ahead and, and uh, make those changes. Um, as far as the audit goes, uh, again, I reviewed it, uh, and it does require some editorial changing. Some of the figures uh, I have some questions about, but basically it's, it's fine, uh, and therefore I ask the board to approve of our submission of this audit report as amended and corrected uh, by the end of this month, which is the deadline for uh, submitting the audit report to the state. So I so move that the audit report be approved for submission to the state. Second. Second. <laughs> Greg, would you want to second that motion? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do you want to touch on anything in that, or we wait till after it's approved? I think I think we're, we're pretty much we're going to go ahead and, and submit it. Uh, we're going to make some corrections. We're going to uh, talk to the auditor once again, make sure that we understand exactly what those numbers are. We have to talk to our new accountant too to make sure that he's um, in agreement with this. Okay. Yeah, because the comments so far, no matters of significant discussion, no difficulties encountered. Right. So. Okay. Anything else on that? No, oh, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, okay, now we'll go to the Chief's report. Okay, uh, the Chief's report is going to be a little bit uh, brief this month. Uh, we, uh, we ran 144 calls in June, which is a new record. Um, and uh, we had uh, started uh, about a about uh, on par for uh, last year for calls, but uh, since then, um, the business has been extremely busy. Uh, so there hasn't been very much else going on in the department. Uh, in fact, uh, we ran nine calls already today, uh, and um, that's really pretty much all we can do at this point is try to keep our head above water, uh, you know, managing the incidents that we're running on. We had. Uh, a total of um, 13 fires during the month, uh, seven wildfires, and uh, the six uh, other fires. Um, fortunately, there was very little uh, fire, um, fire loss during the month, uh, basically $5,000 from uh, three vehicle fires that we had. Uh, the remaining fires uh, had no loss at all, including the uh, wildfires. These uh, wildfires included a uh, number of mutual aid uh, fires that we had. Uh, we had several fires that we responded to outside the district that were in our immediate vicinity, including the Bluebell Fire, which was uh, 
a mile north of the district, and then the Lime Gulch fire that was a mile south of the district. And uh, both of those required considerable uh, number of our resources uh, to assist those agencies in, in, um, uh, in uh, keeping them from uh, getting out of hand. And in both cases, those fires were uh, very successful in that uh, no structures were lost in either case um, uh, from either one of those. Um, the uh, one thing that we did see with this, because we had so many people on, you know, fighting wildfires throughout the entire month, that out of 144 calls, we overlapped incidents 116 times, uh, which means that virtually every time that we had a call going on, we had at least one other uh, apparatus out doing something else, or one other, uh, you know, uh, during the entire month. There were uh, just a few very brief windows where we basically had nobody doing anything uh, during the month. Um, we had uh, a number of those local incidents. Um, you know, we ran uh, as much as five or six days that we were fighting those fires, and. Um, you know, we're again uh, very successful. Those uh, those local fires uh, amounted to about 550 uh, acres, uh, but again, uh, no loss on any of those. Average response time for calls, uh, unfortunately, because so many calls were stacked during the month, uh, we slipped back on that, and the average response time was nine minutes and 37 seconds. That's about. Uh, a little less than a minute longer than we've been running uh, during the quieter months, uh, and it's really not surprising. Again, you know, today we had uh, multiple calls going, uh, basically three different times during the day. I got to drive a fire engine today. It was really cool. <laughs> I had to. I, yeah, I remembered how. <laughs> um, as far as training goes, we did uh, the recruit academy did finish uh, with 15. Uh, new uh, recruits uh, completing. That's our largest class in as long as anyone can remember. Uh, and uh, they completed successfully and, and uh, graduated on uh, the 22nd of June. Um, and even though we uh, graduated twice as many firefighters this year as we did last year, uh, the Recruit Academy uh, cost us about $2,000 less than it did last year, uh, largely because of the assistance oh. of Denver Fire and providing a, a burn building and uh, you know just making sure that uh, we were keeping uh, keeping our costs as low as possible in that so uh, that was a uh, you know a, a really pretty successful uh, outcome for us um, we also had uh, hazardous materials operations class and uh, we offered uh, the um, one of the wildland fire safety classes and uh, given the activity that we've had uh, we had uh, a pretty significant turnout with uh, about half of our firefighters who had not uh, taken that class in the past uh, coming out for it. Uh, so they're, uh, they're very, uh, you know, they're very eager to learn what they can. And obviously with uh, recent fatalities uh, in Arizona, uh, we're going to be really str you know, stressing uh, safety on wildfires uh, throughout this entire summer. Uh, and hopefully not uh, not running any risk of, of losing one of our own. Uh, we had 56 uh, EMS calls during the month, out of which we transported 30 uh, patients. And again, that uh, that is a number we're seeing, you know, continuing to trend down with uh, only about half the patients that we're seeing out there electing to take a transport. In some cases, uh, that was because you know they were minor traffic accidents or something along that lines, but uh, uh, quite a number of those were what we call against medical advice, where people said that, you know, we advised them that they really needed to go, uh, and they made, you know, made that election not to go. So, um, you know, that again is, uh, you know, an unfortunate situation that's uh, being caused by the, uh, you know, lack of insurance or lack of financial capability of paying for, uh, paying for those ambulance transports. Uh, you know, the two things that uh, pretty much that uh, we have been doing when we're not fighting fires uh, is answering questions about fire insurance, uh, which is occurring, you know, multiple times every day. And the other thing is, uh, you know, answering requests for 
uh, mitigation advice. And that has gotten to, uh, basically we are doing more mitigation visits now each week than we did all of last year. Uh, they're, you know, we're getting calls uh, on an hourly basis and trying to schedule as many of those as we can, as we can arrange to do uh, because of the, the concern that people have uh, for the potential of losing their home to a wildfire. Uh, the um, uh, one other thing that we did uh, receive notice on is that uh, we did get a 50% matching grant for $5,100 from the state uh, to replace the laptops that we use for doing patient uh, reports uh, on the ambulances. Uh, even though we have three ambulances, we are, have been down to two laptops uh, for quite a while. The, the third one broke. Uh, and now the keys are falling off the other two. Um, they're, I believe, eight years old at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've drug them out as long as we can. Uh, we, with this matching grant, uh, you know, that's not a, 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 an item that we had budgeted for, but uh, we really can't uh, put that expenditure off any longer. So uh, we'll, we'll move money around to, uh, to purchase those laptops and, uh, and once again be back in a in operation and capable of, of, of uh, writing our patient reports for the hospital when we arrive down there. Um, and then once again on the wildfires, because of the number of fires that have occurred and uh, the activity that, um, uh, you know, that we have been participating in, we have uh, uh, submitted reimbursement for $136,000 of personnel time and, and apparatus on those various fires. Uh, we, had, uh, we had one of the first crews sent into Black Forest. Um, you know, Captain Ware was uh, a strike team leader protecting houses down there with one of our engines working under him uh, within a couple of hours of the, uh, of the call out of the incident. And uh, they were down there for quite a few days. Uh, and then in addition, we had helped out with uh, the fire down near Canyon City and uh, one down near Walsenburg as well. Uh, we've been um, uh, fairly cautious about uh, allowing resources out of the district, but uh, fortunately we've been able to use at least uh, some of the Denver firefighters that have volunteered to assist us with that, and uh, that has allowed us to be uh, a little bit uh, better staffed here back at home while, while we've got those apparatus out helping other, other agencies also. And that, uh, that's pretty much all I've got to report this month. Uh, any old business from the board? I have none. Any new business from the board? Okay, any citizens issues tonight? Okay, uh, how about a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 1900. Thank you, Greg.